40 shot by left in. Keep the answer for a class pop. 120. Welcome to Wexford and for the 2014 Wexford Stages Rally. James Stafford is number one today and is all out for a win. It's a tough rally, two stages with a total of 240 stage miles. So his work's certainly going to be cut out for him. Let's now head straight to the stages for all the action. On to the stages then and there would be an early lead for Mark Straker and Michael Cody in the Darien. A small lead of just two seconds, but a lead nonetheless. Mark, what are the stages like compared to Epping? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, about as fast at the moment, yeah. I thought it would be uh, a bit of a slower pace over here than Epping. I've not done so many rallies over here, really, so I've been coming this year to try and pick the pace up a bit each visit. And, yep, going well so far, I think. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? Yes, I think you can tell I am. Good. And ready to attack the next loop? I think we'll just carry on going. We're not going to get dragged into a fight with anyone. Just, just carry on at the speed we're going and, and uh, see where we are at the end. James Stafford and Amy Ryan would end stage two in second place. Not the lead they would have wanted, but a warning light on the dash caused them to back off a little towards the end of the stage. James, how is that for you? Uh, not too bad. Um, the first stage, the, a warning they came on at the dash about three quarters of a mile before the finish, and I thought there was some badly wrong with the engine, so I, I eased off. But as it turned out, it was only a sensor. Uh, now on the last stage, no, we got home grand, but uh, the engine is missing. There's not something, something simple wrong. So I just hope trying to get straight back to service. Yeah. Have a look. Yeah. Okay, best of luck, James. Damien Cole and Elliot Edmonton made a slightly slower start, nine seconds behind Stafford, and he wasn't feeling he was giving it all he could on this, the opening stage. Damien, we saw you in, in one this morning. You were going pretty well. How how's everything going? Yeah, quite good start. Um, I think we were 13 up on Steve Simpson after stage one. So uh, we've got to keep plodding on. That that didn't seem quite as good in there to me, but I'm not sure what the stage time was like. Frank Kelly and Dave Moynihan made a good start in fourth place, but they were still getting warmed up and ready to push now. They'd tested out the stages. Frank, how was that lead for you? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, baptism of fire, stage one's mental fast. Stage two's fast, a bit more technical, but we enjoyed both of them, a good clean run. Good, so you'll have a proper stab at it next time round. Yeah, um, the further the rally goes on, the more I'll get warmed up. Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird had a good run on stage one, but felt a little off the pace on the morning second stage. Fifth place for now, and just a second behind Kelly. <laughs> Wesley, how are things going? Uh, not too bad, I had a good run the first stage. Felt we maybe didn't attack that as much as we should have done, but we got it going better towards the end, it says we're still here. It's a long rally, so... Aye, uh, two days, so it is, so get out of today, see where we are, and hopefully have an attack tomorrow. John Stone and Carl Williamson have a scare on the opening stages, clipping a bank on the way into this corner, but they get away without any damage and end the day in sixth place. John, how's that loop? Oh, fast. <laughs> I mean, really fast. We had we clouded the bank at the back, but uh, it seemed okay. I think we got a, a slightly smaller, slow puncher, but you got away with it. We got away with it. That's the main thing. Look, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, thanks. Problems in the morning stages for Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh. There's trouble with the launch control on the opening stage. It's enough to drop them down the order into seventh place. Steve, how was that loop? I was okay, yeah, a bit slow on the first one, we had a bit of an issue on the uh, launch off the line, it just wouldn't go off on the first stage, or it went off on the second one, so we don't know what it was, but hopefully, fingers crossed, everything's okay. No. Daniel Barry and Gary McElhenney settle into a good early pace, pairs first time sitting together, and it seems to be going well. They lie in eighth overall in the Evo. Daniel, how was that loop for you? Really good, yeah, we're... Um, this is the first time that Gary's ever sat with me, so uh, we're just kind of getting getting better in together. But uh, it's gone really good. The stages are mega, mega fast. Uh, great to drive. 
and the, the weather obviously is so warm, like it can really push on. But we're, we're just building it up nicely, and I think uh, just need to keep going at this pace. We're happy enough. Alex Laffey and Jack Morton come into this round with their asphalt championship in mind, and they settle in well on the opening stages, a little off the pace they felt they could be setting, so the next stages would give them a chance to change that. Alex, how are you getting on? Yeah, really good, yeah. They had some good stages there. They're really, really fast, so the pace is incredible at the front, so we're just trying to keep up and uh, to edge closer towards them now and see what we can do against the big world cars. Rounding out the top 10 after stage two, David Condal and Eugene McGrath. The pair lying just five seconds behind Laffey at this stage. But it will be a place they have to share for now with Michael Curran and Andy Geraghty, also ending stage two on an identical time to Condal to line joint 10th place. So at the end of the second stage, the top of the results look like this. On to the second loop of stages and there will be no change in the lead as Mark Straker and Michael Cody remain in the lead and their lead now up to 17 seconds. Not very cool out there is it? How was that loop for you? Uh, yeah, a bit hot in one of these. Uh, it was good, Yeah, just trying to keep the same pace as we said before. Um, I'm not sure if Stafford's out, if he is not he's running further back and he took one off us on the one before so we can't count him out still. Um, I think Damien took a couple of us on that one, but yeah, whatever, you know. Exactly. The lead extended in part due to the drop down the results for James Stafford, running under a five minute penalty after stopping to fix engine problems and running down the order too. James, is everything okay? Yeah, no, well, um, I have a little bit of trouble with the engine there, um, but um, we've done a few uh, makeshift jobs on it there, just trying to keep it going through the stage. And uh, so it's still going anyway. That's the main thing. We'll let you back to service. Right. Take care. Okay, thanks. This means that Damien Cole and Elliot Edmonton step up to second place. No problems for the pair on the stages and getting a little quicker now. Damien, loop two over. How was it? Yeah, good. Yeah, faster on both stages than the first loop. So we, uh, I think we're taking time out of Steve Simpson every stage. On stage three, we saw him, we took 21 seconds. So we, were, we were coming into a square right and he was just, I saw his boot spoiler going around the corner. Um, I think he's got problems with the car because he, he's, we're taking so much time every stage. I don't think the car is right. Things were looking up for Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird. They move up to third, taking advantage of a few people's misfortunes around them as well. One of which being Frank Kelly, who we lose from the results at these stages. Wesley, how was that loop for you? Oh, that was a good stage there, and that's the best one today so far. Um, breaking up a wee bit earlier than some of the earlier ones, so uh, we've got to figure it out there now. But I don't see Frank coming in behind us there, so uh, hopefully he'll be all right. You're doing well though. Ah, uh, there was only a few seconds between myself and Frank. He did take time out of us in stage two and three, so we've sort of got the hammer down again there. But there's no sign of him, so I don't know what's happening. No mistakes for John Stone and Carl Williamson in this loop. A good steady run with some improved times. And the pair end stage four in fourth place, just 15 seconds behind Patterson. John, how was that one? Yeah, we just stalled on the start line there, so we dropped a bit of time, but uh, we had a good run through the stage. Feeling a bit better? Uh, just a bit, yeah. I'm not on anything to eat, so... Things were going well for Alex Laffey and Jack Morton. The pair increased the pace on the second loop of stages and move up into fifth place now chasing down championship rival Stone, now just 11 seconds off the Skoda Perry. Alex, how are those two stages? Uh, much better. We took a massive chunk of time by ourselves on the first one. I think we passed Simpson on that stage, so that was good. I don't know how we've done on this stage yet, but it felt really fast and uh, it was definitely a good run. I really and the car is handling well? Perfectly, you know, it's not putting a bit wrong. It's tons of grit, braking's just unbelievable, so. So basically things are going to plan? So far, yeah, so far so good. Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh were not having any more luck in these stages. Problems with the car being down on power meant any advance was looking impossible. They hold on to a steady enough pace to keep hold of sixth place. Steve, the second loop down, how are things going? 
Uh, we've got problems uh, we're down on power somewhere we don't know it was we found a pipe at the last service which we think's fractured we went and got another pipe but we didn't have time to put it on so we you know hopefully in this service now we'll get it on and hopefully we yeah, I won't keep you I'll let you go okay. we'll see you later that's a lot Daniel Barry and Gary McElhenney were settling in well together and getting used to the stages happy with the pace happy to keep going as they were for the rest of the day in seventh overall Michael Curran and Ender Geraghty come out of the battle on top after ending the last stages and join 10th. They move up to 8th overall now and 6 seconds ahead of Conkle. How is that for you? Great, yeah, everything's fine, yeah. Good. Much better run this time. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, happy with all. Excellent. Well, obviously, long way to go, but so far so good. Yeah, everything's good, yeah. yeah. And the car is behaving itself. Yeah, everything's good. We changed the tyres that time, man. It's much better, yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. break in service then for a change. Yeah, to do good. with it. Yeah. Okay. So that means it's ninth place for David Condell and Eugene McGrath. Six seconds down on Curran, but with plenty more miles to come. And a new name rounding out the top ten as Brian Brogan and Damien McGinnigan end stage four in 10th place, eight seconds behind Condle in the overall and class results. Brian, how are those two stages? Ah, uh, good, coming in there with trouble in the morning there, you know, with intercom problems and that there, but it's coming good there now at the same time, it's in the nice flow of things there. Long way to go yet. So just two more stages remaining on day one and the results look like this. The temperature in Wexford is certainly hotting up and so too is the competition. Join us after the break for more action from the Wexford Stages Rally. On to the final stages of the day then and once again no change in the lead of the event as Mark Straker and Michael Cody continue their dominance with a lead of 21 seconds. No change either for Damien Cole and Elliot Edmondson. The asphalt championship driver feeling the stages on day two would suit the world rally cars better, so the chase would be on. Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird end the day in a great podium position, 43 seconds behind Cole, but with nine more stages remaining, anything could happen yet. Once again, Alex Laffey and Jack Morton have a great run on the stages to end the day in fourth overall. The time's looking good and the confidence high going into day two. John Stone and Carl Williamson were also producing some good times on the stages now. And they end day one in fifth overall. They may have been passed on the results by Laffey, but things were still close between the UK pair. Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh continue to struggle. They have power issues, but at least things are not getting any worse. The pair needed the championship points this weekend, so they would have to keep going and see what happens. No change in the pace from Daniel Barry and Gary McElhenney as they keep going well in seventh. The Evo pair having a good run this weekend with no problems. No change in 8th place for Michael Curran and Ender Geraghty as they keep hold of that place going into day 2. The pair just 2 seconds behind Barry now. And it will be move up to ninth place for Brian Brogan and Damien McGettigan as they take over the place held by David Condell who was now a few places further down the results. So rounding out the top 10 will be Kevin Barrett and Anthony Nestor making their way up the results after a wrong tyre and set-up choice this morning, costing them a lot of time. I look now at some of the classes and leading the way in Class 2 at this stage, Eamon Bates and James Sinnott. 30 seconds will be the advantage in the class as Brendan Stone and John Kieran follow closely behind in second place. And for Shay Delaney and Alan Maloney, it will be a little more of a gap as they lie 51 seconds further back in third place. 
in class three, Andy and John Hayes, who take the lead, a small advantage of just 18 seconds at the end of day one. Their advantage would be over second place to Ian Neville and Kian Corbett, the Civic pair having a good run over the day one stages. And for Norman Kohler and Michael Lanigan, it will be third place, with a two minute deficit to the crews ahead. With Daniel Barry out in the lead of class four, it'll be up to Martin Doherty and Kevin Flanagan to take up second in that class. The battle between second and third will be a little closer, with Pat Kirk and John McElhenney taking third place at this stage. Things change in class six throughout day one, but it would eventually settle on John Pettit and Michael Coleman taking the overnight lead. For Robert Leach and Tommy Cuddyhee, it will be second place now. The pair briefly led the class in the Proton, but for now they go into day two in a chasing position. Richard and Helena Scallon would be a further minute back on the class leaders at this stage. Not too much to try and gain back on day two. Just the two runners in class seven. And it will be the lead for Emmett Lyons and Kevin Purcell in the Honda Integra. The reason for their big lead? Problems. For Kieran Cloak and David Crean, who go out on day one and have to super rally for day two. Just two crews in class nine this weekend. There's a big difference between the pair at this stage with Shane Cahalan and Paul Reck coming out on top at the end of day one. For John Barry and David Busher, it will be second place. Barry McGill and Joey Kane have a good start to the event in the 9A class. They get themselves a two and a half minute lead going into day two. Their lead over the Nova of Kenny O'Brien and Thomas Cullen, the pair having a big advantage in that second place themselves. Their advantage over third place Martin Hendrick and Brendan Hayden pair a few minutes off the pace now in their Nova. Class 10 would see Niall and Gary Fitzpatrick open up a good early lead, an advantage of one minute now at the end of day one. For Pashel O'Shea and Robbie Hennessy, it would be second place. The pair not quite on the pace of the leaders, but managing to hold to their own in second. And for Jerk Kelly and Des Curtis, it would be third place in the class. At this stage, a further two minutes behind O'Shea in second. Things will be a little closer in the 11F class as Mark Kennedy and Ian O'Leary take the advantage at the end of day one. Their advantage in that place just over 34 seconds to second in class Richard Moore and Brian Halligan in the Civic. And for Colin O'Toole and Seamus O'Grady it would be third in the class. 27 seconds behind Moore, just a minute separating the top three now. In the 11R class, it would be Tommy McDonough and Paul Hickey who open out a good two and a half minute lead at the end of day one in the escort. Bobby Hennessy and Sarah Stamp unfortunately end day one in second place, but they would have to keep an eye on the times being set behind them. Their advantage in second place was now only 26 seconds, with Andrew Lisi and Joe O'Brien closing in behind them in third place in the class. Just a handful of crews in the Class 12 battle, and it will be Liam and Declan O'Neill who would lead the way there at the end of Stage 6. Two minutes of a lead in that position. And a similar story for John and Michael Murphy in second place, as they have over a two-minute advantage in that place themselves. That advantage over third place Michael Coffey and Jerry Ryan, rounding out the Class 12 results in that place. John Bonner and Liam Jordan find themselves in the lead of Class 13 at the end of day one. A good lead of just over a minute for the pair now. But it wouldn't be over yet and with many more stages to come on day two. And it would be second place David James and Aidan Kent that would be the ones trying to chase down the class leaders for the rest of the event. And it wouldn't be the best of starts for Chris Armstrong and Tommy Clinton as they end the day third in class. Just 11 seconds behind the escort of James. With Damien Cole out in the lead of Class 15, it will be Thomas Walton and Billy Sheely that end the day second in the class. There's a Welsh rivalry going on in Class 18, but at the end of day one, it would be Thomas Davies and Ryland James coming out on top. Gareth Lloyd and Jim Crow would have to set for second in class at this stage, but the fight would be ongoing into the second day of rallying tomorrow. Unfortunately for George Leach and Connor Flynn, it would be a battle of their own down in third place in the class, a good way off the lead pair. With Alex Laffey out in front of class 20, Mark Nangle and Noleg Breen take up second in the class at this stage. They were a few minutes off the leaders, but things were closer for holding off third. And in that third place, Paul Barrett and Declan Tumulty, 
the pair only 45 seconds behind the Subaru pair, so the fight will go on into day two. At the end of day one, the overall results look like this. James, you've had a bit of a tough day for what started pretty well. Uh, do you want to talk us through it? Uh, yeah, um, well, the first couple of stages there, uh, the car wasn't really going right. It was uh, breaking down, and um, it, took, um, it took a while. It took two servers to get started. Even the third and fourth stage, you know, it, was still, it was better, but it uh, just still wasn't going right. But we got, we got sorted in the last service, and it's going, it went okay for the last, for the last two stages there now. So, um, Everything seems to be going all right now. Good. You're still in with a with a chance for the hat trick. Well, sure, we're still in with a chance, but like you know, um, all those other the competitors are going very hard. Mark Straker and Damien Cole, and, them, and like, they're going very, very hard. And so, does anyone's rally really? You know. Damien, day one down. Can you give us a bit of a summary of how today went? Yeah, it's been really good. We've got quicker every time through the stages, so maybe we should have been a bit quicker the first time through. But it's it's a confidence thing. Um, we're Doing, uh, doing okay as far as the championship goes. We're well over a minute in front of Steve Simpson, so as far as that's concerned, it's all going to plan. Thomas, end of day one, leading your class. Must be pretty happy. Yeah, happy with uh, today, how it's gone. Um, yeah, it's gone good and nice stages, and it's nice to be back over an island doing an event. Um, so, yeah, all in all, the weather's been good and just really happy. And what do you think about tomorrow's stages, how they're going to suit you? To be honest, I can't really remember what they're like, so I'll probably just find out in the morning. Um, I'm hopeless at remembering what they're like, so um, yeah, I'm sure they'll be good. Uh, sometimes not a bad thing when you do a recce, and sometimes yeah. they turn out to be different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's a, a few more chicanes in them, so we'll probably struggle against the cars with a bit more power overall. Um, but yeah, just happy to still be here and enjoying the, enjoying the rally. Andy, you're leading your class today. Was it a good day? Midland day. Um, we burst a shock this morning on the first stage and burst another one on the third stage. And then we got stuck in limp mode as well, so we were topping out at 50 miles an hour for um, for one stage as well. Well, so, you're obviously doing something right. Uh, yeah, we're not sparing her where we are going right, so <laughs> any, any chance we get, we're, we're pushing her on. Are you enjoying it? Ah, uh, we are, yeah. It's a great stage, it's a great rally, so um, it's just a pity we couldn't get a few more in the class and have a proper battle. True. So, so tomorrow's stages? Um, very fast again. Um, looking forward to now, right? Hopefully we get the car right and sure, try and keep her on the road. Yeah, good. And hopefully you get a class win. Ah, I would try your best now, but the boys are not push over hang, so we'll be at our best now to get one. Right. Well, best of luck for tomorrow. We'll be talking to you throughout the day. Thanks very much. Take See care. you then. So we've come to the end of day one of the Wexford Stages Rally. We had six hard, very fast stages today with excellent weather. Stay tuned for day two. On to day two then, and we would unfortunately lose rally leaders Mark Straker and Michael Cody. Problems with the car would mean the pair lose concentration towards the end of the stage and end up hitting some bales, as seen from the onboard here with Damien Cole. And of course, this would all mean that for Damien Cole and Elliot Edmondson, it would now be the lead of the event and a good 55 seconds advantage all of his own. Damien, how was that loop for you? Yeah, big push this morning. Um, good stage times we were taking time out of uh, Mark Straker in front um, and taking time out of the championship cars but Mark Straker's gone off about 200 yards before the finish there into a bale and the car was across the road but they're both out and both out and okay but I'd say he's out of the rally now. Cole might be in the lead but it was being chased down by Alex Laffey and Jack Morton. The pair moving up the results once again in these stages and now lying in second place. If the pace keeps up anything is possible. Alex, how is that loop for you? Really, really good. Um, we settled in quickly, got the pace straight in there. Uh, we've been taking time out of everyone behind us and the escort ahead, so it's going really well so far. Really happy. Yeah, you're looking fairly chilled out. Yeah, the stage aren't too bad. They're a little loose in places. Um, and we obviously, we just had to slow down for striker. We haven't really had any dramas, so it's been good. There wouldn't be any change for Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird as they remain in third place. Laffey may have jumped them in the results, but the loss of Straker means it's no change overall for Patterson, despite all that was going on around them. Wesley, how was that loop? Uh, not too bad. Good enough first stage. They spun and stalled it at the Herbin on the second stage out. Um, but a good enough run through up on there, so uh, we're, we're, we're losing a bit of time to Alex behind us, but 
sort of expected that this morning. Long day ahead, yes. Oh, no, nor six to go, so. Despite not feeling 100%, John Stone and Carl Williamson managed to move up to fourth overall at the start of day two. Things were going well, apart from a small mistake on the second stage of the day. Morning, how was that, Lou? Yeah, good. Uh, just messed up on the second one, but other than that, we had a really good run, thanks, yeah. Okay, so things are going to plan so far? Absolutely, good. yeah. And I bet you're looking forward to the rest of them? Yeah, I, I wish it was just another three, because I'm tired. Unable to fix the problem with the car, it will be no advance for Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh. A lack of power was just keeping them from driving to the car's limits. And they lie in fifth place. Steve, how are those three stages? Yeah, the good stages, yeah. They were bumpy, quite twisty. There's a good dusting on there as well, so it made it a little bit slippy. So, hopefully, we're just trying to catch uh, Mr Stone in front of us. A little move in the right direction for Daniel Barry and Gary McElhenney. It sees them jump up to sixth overall. The class lead was up to a minute now, so they would be more than happy with the pace. Daniel, how was that loop? Yeah, really good, yeah. Um, we were uh, over a minute lead now in Group N, so we can't do anything stupid, don't want to do anything stupid, but our times are still fairly good there. Um, that, that stage in there is a kind of a, you could lose a lot of time, you won't make any time. So you just have to be neat and tidy, and that's what we've done. So, uh, into service now, and uh, maybe set a tyre or some go again. A wrong tyre choice in this loop of stages wasn't helping Michael Curran and Andy Garrity, but at least it wasn't giving them too many problems. They line seventh overall with six stages remaining. Michael, how is that loop? Everything's good, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. yeah. happy. Well, wrong tyres, but yeah, we get them changed now, so yeah. it's just a matter of getting to the end. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let you off to service. Yeah, thanks. Take okay. care. All right. Kevin Barrett and Anthony Nestor were continuing their climb back up the results to end these stages in eighth place. Subaru pair a lot happier with the setup of the car, and the times were reflecting that. Kevin, all smiles this morning. Yeah, going a bit better this morning. The stage next to was a little bit better, but um, look, we're, we're up a couple of places, but long day to go yet. Jim McKenna and Thomas Trina have a good few stages this morning to move up to ninth place. A good run on the start of the second day for the Escort pairing, who are lying third in their class now. Jim, how did you get on with that loop? Ah, them was good stages there, you know, there, there's driving in them and it's, it's not just flat out stuff, it's, it's a bit of driving and you can make time in there. You look like you enjoyed it? Oh, it's good, ah, yeah. And how's the car going? The car's going alright, I just need to go a bit better. And for David Condler and Eugene McGrath, there will be a move back up the results to end this loop, rounding out the top 10 in 10th overall. David, yes. fast loop, how do you enjoy it? Oh yeah, it was very good. Um, yeah, very fast, very, very fast and and very enjoyable. And my apologies yesterday, I didn't get a chance to stop to talk to you. I had a bad oh, day at the office. So. Don't worry, don't worry. You're here today. <laughs> yes, that's the that's main exactly thing. exactly it. Yes, indeed. Listen, we'll let you go. We'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's the end of stage nine, and the results look like this. On then to the penultimate loop of stages, and there's no change for the new leaders, Damien Cole and Elliot Edmonton, but the pair lose a few seconds to lie just 52 seconds on the lead. Damien, first out, um, what seems to be happening? Yeah, we had a good run through there, a little bit quicker on each one than the first time. Just trying to get it to the end now, so try and manage the gap. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's really good. The stages today are a bit better suited to this car than yesterday. A bit more technical and tight and twisty. And how's the car? Yeah, it's good. Really good, yeah. Alex Laffey and Jack Morton were continuing to go well on the stages and hold second place. Unable to take more than a couple of seconds from Cole, but the pace was certainly there. Alex, how is that loop for you? Uh, really good. Good pace for there. It's, uh, it's really tight on the first two stages, the times are so close, like seconds between everyone. But we just did a really good time in there. I don't know how it was with everyone else, but uh, no, it was good, good run. 
No change for Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird in these stages as they keep hold of the rear-wheel drive lead and line third overall. Just 13 seconds behind Laffey with three more stages to go. But the brakes are starting to fade a little now. Wesley, how was that loop? Oh, it was a good loop out there. Uh, no real mistakes. Brakes are starting to fade a bit on it. I have a warped disc, so I'm not going to be able to change it now. I have only three to do, so hopefully we've got to nurse it through to the finish. Yeah, look, three more to do, though. All to play for. Yeah, John Stone's coming in quick behind us. and I think it's maybe down to about 15 now, so hopefully we can keep him at bay. We'll be happy at that, you know. No change for John Stone and Carl Williamson. The pair remain in fourth overall with 16 seconds to Patterson. There would be a chance of a podium, but there would have to be a big push in the final stages. John, all smiles. How did that go? Yeah, really good, actually. Really good loop for us there. I think we've taken a bit of time back, so, uh, yeah, keep pushing. One more loop to go. One more loop could all uh, change, or maybe not. Then we can get to bed. Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh were settled in fifth place now. Happy that the car was continuing to run without losing any more power, but of course, it wasn't the result they would have wanted. Steve, how was that loop? Yeah, it's okay. The stages are great, you know. Just shame the car's going a bit worse now. It's just really down on power now, so hopefully we'll make it to the end. But when you want to do that stage, there's a few uphills and it's just... Is it something you can fix and service? No, 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 I think something wants to rebuild, but hopefully it doesn't go before. No. Daniel Barry and Gary McElhenney continue to lead the way in their class, extending the lead in, a little, in fact, but for now, the overall position wasn't going to change, but with just three seconds holding back seventh, it was going to be close. Daniel, how was that, Lou? Really good, yep, yep, it's all going to plan uh, at the moment, anyway. Uh, it's hard working there, I tell you. It's not. It's not easy, but um, we're just trying to pick a pace and not, you know, go over that. We don't want to make any any silly mistakes and stuff, you know. But uh, it's all going to plan at the moment. Um, another three to go, so just have to just have to be careful. Don't do it in stupid. Well, There's look, plenty of rocks and stuff out there to I've catch you. I've heard. And in that seventh place, just three seconds behind Barry were Kevin Barrett and Anthony Nesta. The pace was good, and those three seconds over three more stages would be possible. So the battle was on to the finish now. Kevin, how was that loop? Yeah, there was just a, an off that stage, the guy started stage in front of us, had an accident, so we'd stop and get the services in. So that was the important thing to do there. So yeah, the run was good for us up to that stage, but look, uh, that stage cancelled there now, so we were just the first car through. Glad we're coming through convoy. These stages see James Stafford and Amy Ryan move back up into the top ten. Lying in eighth overall, the pair less than four minutes off the lead, a lead they could have held had it not been for the penalty. Jim McKenna and Thomas Trina are still enjoying themselves on the stages today, lying in ninth overall and holding third in the class. Jim, how was that last loop? That was good, that last loop. Yeah, there's a lot of loose gravel coming on it now, but the, the more traffic is over, but that's still good status. You're still enjoying it? Yeah, that's what's all about. And three more stages to go? Three more and home, yeah. And for David Condlin, Eugene McGrath, it would be 10th, the pair keeping up with the times in the class. Line just 17 seconds behind McKenna ahead of them. How was that loop? Uh, it was great until, uh, until that stage. We made a mistake in the first stage out after service and lost some time. But uh, as I said, with that accident, that's after being a, it was great up until that. But uh, hopefully the crew is okay and we wait for the service to come in there. So all should be good. So with just three stages remaining, the results look like this. With only a few stages to go, join us after the break for more action from the Wexford Stages Rally. Before we take a look at the overall results, a quick look at the juniors. And for David Roche and Mark Doran, it would be a fifth place finish for the pair. Tom Holton and Trevor Payne end the event in fourth place. They have a good lead of almost two minutes in the juniors ahead of the event. Things were quite close in the top three this weekend, with Philip McDonald and Seamus Curran coming out with the final step on the podium, just 31 seconds back from second place. 
And in that second place, it would be the Toyota Twin Cam of Martin Swinburne and Owen Lennon, finishing the event in the runner-up position. But taking the win this weekend with a lead of 55 seconds at the end were Brian and Richard Harney in the Escort, a great result for the pair in Wexford. On to the class results, and it will be third in class two at the end of the event for Richie Dalton and Johnny Rafter. Shade Laney and Alan Maloney get themselves in second in the class this weekend. It's a good run for the pair. But for Brendan Stone and John Kieran, it will be the class win, a good advantage of over two minutes at the end of the event. Kev and Jane Price super rally and finish the event with those stage maximums, but at least they finish and it's third in class three for them. Norman Kohler and Michael Lanigan end the day, second in class, 30 second penalty wasn't going to do anything to change the results though. So for Owen Neville and Kian Corbett, it would be the class three win. The pair have a good run to take the class win by over four minutes. A few changes in class six, but not for Richard and Helena Scallon, as they remain in third in the class to finish the event. And Andrew Fanning and Derek Gibbs would be second in class. Some good times on day two, helping the pair net the class runner-up place. And for Robert Leach and Tommy Cudahy, it would be a day two push that sees them take a great class six win at the end of the event this weekend. Survivor in class seven for Emmett Lyons and Kevin Purcell. They're the only finishers in that class and take the class win as a result. The same story in class nine with Shane Cahalan and Paul Reck being the only ones to finish the event. So they take the class victory. The 9A class would fare a little better, and for Martin Hendrick and Brendan Hayden, it would be third in the class this weekend. Marty Kinsella and Shirley O'Neill managed to hold off Hendrick to finish the event in second place. 56 seconds was their advantage in the end, but for Kenny O'Brien and Thomas Cullen, it would be a runaway class win, over 11 minutes of a lead for the pair at the end of the two days of rally. In class 10, there will be a few minutes difference in the top crews as well, with Jerk Kelly and Des Curtis taking third in that class at the finish. Pascal O'Shea and Robbie Hennessy finish in no man's land, over four minutes ahead of Kelly, but with almost four minutes to the class lead. So for the pair, it would be second in class this weekend. But taking the win and that four minute lead, Niall and Gary Fitzpatrick, a great result for the escort pair this weekend. In the 11F class, it will be third place for Richard Cleary and Neve Holland, one of a number of crews in this class to have two super rally on day two. And with only the top two getting through without problems, it would be Richard Moore and Brian Halligan that take second in the class today. But for Mark Kennedy and Ian O'Leary, it's a class win. A small but healthy one minute advantage for the pair at the end of the day. Just a minute separated the final podium places in the class 11R with Mark Hayden and Paul Furlong coming out runner-up in that battle and taking third in class this weekend. Derek and Shane Walker would be the pair coming out in second in the class. A good result for the Toyota pairing. But for Tommy McDonough and Paul Hickey, it would be a win and a good five-minute lead in the class going into the end of the event. Just three finishes in class 12 this weekend and it will be Michael Coffey and Jerry Ryan that finish in that final place. No change in the results in the class all weekend for the pair. For John and Michael Murphy, it's second in the class. A good result for the pair this weekend. But the class win in Wexford will go to Liam and Declan O'Neill. The pair get to the finish with over a five minute lead in their class. John Stafford and Richie Codd round out a close battle in the podium places of class 13. They end the event third in the class in the rear wheel drive Peugeot 205. Chris Armstrong and Tommy Clinton have a bit of an improved day to take second in the class this weekend in the Escort. But it will be the class 13 win for John Bonner and Leon Jordan. they are taking victory by almost two minutes. With Damien Colt still leading the way in class 15, it's a second in class finish this weekend for Thomas Warden and Billy Sheely in the Evo. Not much would change in class 18 as George Leach and Connor Flynn still remain down in third place. And no change to the battle at the top with Gareth Lloyd and Jim Crow still taking second in place at the end of the event. But it was a little closer, the gap between Lloyd and eventual class winners Thomas Davis and Ryland James. It was down to just 44 seconds after the final stage. In class 20, it will be Paul Barrett and Declan Jumalty that take third place. 
They managed to get within eight seconds of the crew ahead. But that means for Mark Nangle and Nolik Breen, it would be that second place. Class leader Alex Laffey was way out in front, but the pair win their own personal battle with Barrett. And there will be change in class four as Marion Evans and Jonathan Jackson get more settled and on the pace to move up into third in that class. On to the top ten then. And taking second class four's battle ahead of Evans while Martin Doherty and Kevin Flanagan move up into the top ten in the day's final stages for the pair as they end the event in tenth. David Condell and Eugene McGrath have a good run all weekend to end the event in ninth overall. It's a good result for them as they finish with third in class 14 as well. Unfortunately, we lose James Stafford and Amy Ryan in the final stages. They climb back up the results into eighth now and they would have to try again next year for that win. Jim McKenna and Thomas Trina end the event with second in class 14. The pair having a great weekend to end the event in eighth overall as well. Daniel Barry and Gary Knucklehenny, unfortunately, can't hold on to that overall position. They slip down into seventh, but it was the class that was important, and they take a very convincing win in the group end battle. So for Kevin Barrett and Anthony Nesta, it's sixth place. A bad start to the event put them in a chasing position. They came good on day two, and the pair end the event in sixth overall and third in the class. Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh get the poorly Subaru to the end of the event to score themselves some much-needed asphalt championship points. Fifth overall wasn't the result they came here for, but it was one that they would be thankful for, given the problems. John Stone and Carl Williamson have a little moment in the final stages, losing a headlight. But apart from that, it's a good clean run to take fourth overall at the end of a tough weekend. Thankfully for Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird, they managed to hold off any advantage from Stone and managed to get through the remaining stages without any more issues to take the final step on the podium this weekend. For Alex Laffey and Jack Morton, it will be a great weekend and one of their best results to date. The pair really getting to grips with the new car this season and ending the day in the runner-up position. So that means that for Damien Cole and Elliot Edmondson, it was the win, but only just. The gearbox giving up in the final stage and the pair limping the car back to the finish at the Riverbank House Hotel. So, before we chat to some of the crews, here's a reminder of the overall results. Damien, three times winner in Wexford, maximum championship points. Can you sum up the weekend? Yeah, it's been a great weekend. Um, we've been really fortunate at the end. Gearbox has gone about three corners from the finish to the last stage. I heard a little little bit of a noise. And then when we went over the line and down to the marshals, you can hear it sort of grinding away. Um, and if we <coughs> we managed to trundle it along a 30 mile an hour down the main road back to the finish. But if there'd been one more stage, that would have been us out of the rally. So uh, it lasted just long enough. Alex, biggest congratulations. Second overall, you were pushing um, Damien hard today. Uh, yeah, we were trying as hard as we could. We had a lot of dramas in the last loop got through the uh, first stage of the last loop and the uh, uh, water temp warning came up so we had to stop after in between every stage and fill the car with water again so we were just sort of cruising through and trying to keep the pace as best we could but the pace was still good still still really fast so we're just glad, glad to be at the end you know Wesley third overall how are you feeling Ah, oh, delighted. That was a great run there. Uh, John was coming on strong at the finish, the pressure was on, so it all worked out well. We are quickest in the last stage, so we're glad to hold on to third overall. Everything went well this weekend for you? Ah, great. But a wee problem in the middle loop there today, a broken brake disc, but we got in the service, got that sorted out. We're good to go for the last loop, so all's well that ends well. Brilliant. Biggest congratulations again. Great, thank you. Danny, winner of Group N. Biggest congratulations, how do you feel? I'm absolutely delighted with the win. We're really, really good. We had a great day, uh, great weekend. It wasn't easy, it was tough work, you know. It was um, 
Gary's first time sitting with me as well, so it was a lot to get used to, but it just worked well. He, he never missed a beat all weekend, and the lad's done a great job with the car, which was absolutely delighted now. Great weekend. So that's it from the 2014 Wexford Stages Rally. A massive win from Damien Cole, followed closely by Alex Laffey in second, and Wesley Patterson in third. Thanks for watching Special Stage. We look forward to seeing you soon. Short, five left in. Even after we're class bumping, 120.